So, is this the time to buy or sell the Ammo Inc. stock? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. And do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. I have a theme called Physical Security Slash Safety. Here is ammo, uh, they are in the ammunition business, 8.6% uh, from the 52 week low, but still minus 59% uh, yeah, away from the highs. Here is their website, uh, no longer a shot in the dark, uh, see path, uh, bullet path, improve your accuracy, safe for range use, non incendiary projectiles, exclusive deck. That looks really interesting. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. Wow. That so there's some inno innovation here. A uh, new type of projectiles. That's really cool. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, interesting stuff. So let's look at the charts. Yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, these in inno innovations uh, have uh, benefited the stock yet. Uh, looking at these weekly data points, we definitively have what could be monster time cycles. We measure the time cycle like this or this. Uh, I mean, it could be that uh, there's a little bit more left in the declining part of the time cycle, but there could be a major rising phase around the corner. If we look at previous uh, time where we had a big sell-off here, it's a bit analogous to this. Um, uh, back here, we got a rally, a pullback. Here, we got a rally and a pullback. But then we did get, you know, a little bit of a rally here. So we could have a bit of a bounce or a longer term low for the stock. Uh, looking here at um, the candlesticks, there is some change here. We have gone from incredible bearishness to now more of an even battle and maybe even a bit of a bullish um, tendency. On the daily data points, uh, we do see, see sort of higher high-ish, uh, higher low-ish, but it's mixed. It's not cleanly li bullish uh, at all, but it's not as bearish as, as it used uh, to be. Uh, looking here at um, uh, the RSI and the PPOs, yeah, we are emerging from an RSI level. This level, it did trigger the massive rally we had uh, a bit further back. So this low here uh, had the same RSI level. And if you bought that RSI level, you could have gained yeah, approaching 60% on the daily data points. And we are definitively far from being overbought. And uh, compared to previous rallies, we are not in danger territory yet. In my notes, I write uh, horizontal support and time cycle bull with a bit of a question mark. I give the bulls three here on the technicals. They have a lot to prove. Um... But there is something happening here that could become very interesting. Let's look at the seasonality. So to the right here, so the blue line, uh, that's the average over the last seven years. Usually some strength into late November, but then a bunch of weakness. Um, the green is the last five years. And in that case, the seasonality is pretty strong into uh, the 17th-ish of January. Uh, the context now is that um, the Republicans performed quite poorly in the elections. And we have seen a trend before is that when they perform poorly, they usually uh, you know, protest by going uh, to the range uh, and spend a bunch of money on... Uh, like ammunition and the like, also because of the concern that there's going to be like crackdowns on um, those products, which usually leads to increased buying. So that the context here could also be bullish. Uh, to the left here over the last five years, 
Uh, we see that November and December are mediocre. At the last 10 years, November is uh, the worst month. The last 20 years. November is a mediocre month and also December, but December is the second strongest month. But on average, the performance is pretty poor for the, for the stock. I give the bears a minus four here on the seasonality. Uh, it's It was a bit messy. But there is the potentiality that... Um, so, so the monthly seasonality is not necessarily that bullish, but the election seasonality and the outcomes of that event could be pretty bullish for the stock. But that is a different type of seasonality. Um, which I'm not sure I should mix that into this seasonality analysis, but I do say it here. So some, it's something to take into account. Let's look at the fundamentals. So SAX has a number three hold, but E value, B growth and B momentum, VGM of A. So the style scores are stellar. Industry rank, bottom 32%, but they do have this category of very broad of leisure and recreation products. Uh, here the dividend is zero, uh, market cap 356 million US dollars. Insider activity is very interesting. Uh, throughout October, the insiders were buying shares. So that is definitively what you want uh, to see. Uh, looking at the consensus estimates here, we have a whopping number of three. Analysts covering the stock, average price target is 158% above us, highest is 190% above, the lowest is 93.5% ab above us. In this case, I will give the bulls a whopping eight on the fundamentals. Insiders are buying, style scores are fantastic, and we have very good price targets. So yes, uh, definitively, the bulls, they reign on the fundamentals while we are at support. Let's look at relative performance. We have 80% correlation with the S&P 500, 78% with the industrial CTF. And we have minus 35% with the dollar index and 11% with the 10 year yield. Short term, we have 64% with S&P 500, 47% with XLI, minus 61% with the dollar index, and minus 82% with the 10-year yield. Looking short and long term, uh, the strongest correlation we did get is with the S&P 500. So here is the S&P 500. We have seen a pretty good rally here from the 200-week moving average in red, broken out above the purple 20-week moving average this week. So definitively there is strength here on the daily data points, broken out above the blue 100-day moving average. Yeah, so we have that seasonal strength. Um, looking at RSI on the weeklies, we could go a bit higher until we get into, you know, the fail level uh, of the August rally. On the daily data points, yeah, if you look here at the August rally, we failed after we got overbought. However, there is a big but here. If you look at the March rally, it failed at 65-ish um, RSI. Um, and when we look here at the 20 day PPOs and also the green 50 daily moving average PPOs, we are at a level that we have failed in the past. Okay, let's compare the uh, stock with the XLI. We have seen very massive underperformance from ammo, but we are approaching a level on the weekly RSI where we usually see turnarounds. Yeah, back here, massive outperformance from ammo. And also, you know, back here, we have seen that pattern as well. 
So that's interesting. Let's look at it. Oh, the seasonality is very interesting. You see that over the last five years in green, seven years in blue, 10 years in red, leading into January. Uh, ammo usually outperforms the XLI. I give the bulls a 5 on relative performance. We end up with a 3.0 in favor of the bulls. The entry signal is that we are at horizontal support and there is a time cycle, a bullish phase around the corner. So overall it is pretty bullish, uh, especially the fundamentals. Um, so this is definitively very interesting. And you know, as I said, the context here of uh, the political uh, event in America, there is, uh, you know, an, uh, an old pattern of that, of those losses leading to, uh, you know, some frenzy, you know, uh, buying at these types of stores because of the uh, concern that there will be a shutdown. Uh, we have some time left to run through some charts. Uh, in this case, we didn't really have um, an ETF that sort of is very directly, at least, related to the stock. Uh, I think that XLI is close-ish. Um, aerospace and defense ETF would also be a bit close, but yeah, it w certainly wouldn't really fit with consumer discretionary. So let's just run through various charts of interest that's been in the news and flx that's netflix uh, so netflix it's seen uh, some nice rally um but it, but it's um maybe the easy gains have been made here on netflix we have a bit of a breakout above the 200 daily moving average then again, we have seen a bit of a strong breakout, so maybe rather buy on a pullback. And while we are talking about streaming, Curiosity Stream, what's up there? Yeah, this is annoying because we have seen a very strong rally uh, above uh, the purple 20 week moving average. So this is like a move that. So there, there, there certainly could be more left in the rally, but. When you are up, you know, 44%, yeah, it's not an ideal, it's not a low risk place to enter a position. Um, but yeah, a strong move. Yeah, but we have seen before, you know, failure above the blue 100 day moving average. But yeah, this is one of those stocks that's been in a monster downtrend. So if it were to be able to turn around, the upside could be pretty substantial. The issue with Curiosity Stream is that their business model is not, it's odd, uh, it's it's very cheap for the service, simultaneously as they are addressing uh, an audience that most likely has higher than average income. And while they are on the topic of uh, streaming, let's have a bit of a look at Disney. Walt Disney Company. Mm, this is very interesting. So Walt Disney is definitively at very long term horizontal support. We have support back here, 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 cluster of support, of support here and also back here. Now, this is interesting. Looking at the last trading here, there seems to be a floor. What I don't like is that if you look at the wick of the last candlestick, we were way down here, but then we did close higher. But this is a bit conflicted uh, in terms of messaging because yes, we are at horizontal closing support, but I don't like that there were sellers all the way down there. But this looks interesting. Uh, the bull enemy is more excited than the bear. But the bull is a bit cautious because I don't like that wick. That is not a that that's a bit of a spooky wick. Uh, looking at RSI and PPL, we are still very much low. If you go here to the daily data points, accumulation distribution is still mediocre. So all in all, um, ammo looks very interesting. Interesting uh, here, uh, especially the fundamentals of the other stocks we looked at. I think that Disney is definitively very intriguing. But as I said, that 
the lower end of the wick. Oh, I don't like that. Um, but we did close higher. Uh, the closing is, of course, the most important part. And as you see now, uh, you can get you know the key market index report and also the seasonality report uh, on the VIP access platform on diamondarm.com. Uh, so there's a bunch of uh, great stuff heading there now uh, and uh, definitely stay tuned for more.